Hey friends, welcome back to The Code Wolf. We've got a great video today about another new feature in .NET 8 related to output caching. We're gonna see how to configure ASP.NET Core apps to use Redis as the backing data store for output caching. That was difficult to say, but luckily it's much easier to set up, so let's dive right in. All right, so let's walk through how to wire up our app to use Redis as the data store for our output caching. Now for this video, I'm gonna be using Azure Cache for Redis just because it's very cheap and easy to set up a basic testing instance of that, but feel free to use whatever Redis implementation you want. And if you don't have access to Redis or can't create one, uh, just feel free to follow along conceptually. The implementation steps are actually pretty simple. So currently we have this app here that already has basic output caching set up. This is just kind of the standard out of the box in memory output caching that we've had with .NET since version seven. So you can see up here, we're registering our output caching services and registering our middleware as well. Those are kind of the two main steps to get that set up and working. And then on our out of the box weather forecast endpoint, we have this line that says cache output with a time span of 60 seconds for the expiration. So this is essentially going to cache the response and then hold that response and serve that up for the next 60 seconds. And when that expires, it'll repopulate automatically. Just to get an idea of what we're looking at here, I'm gonna run the app and we can test this out in the browser to look at the behavior. And so see, we have a breakpoint in this method. So the first time we should hit this method and then from then on, we should just get the cached version. So on our Swagger page here, I'll just execute this get method for the weather forecast. And sure enough, we hit our breakpoint over in this method. Um, and just as a side note, a lot of these uh, red squigglies or warnings are just due to the .NET 8 tooling. Um, seems to be having some issues with my VS code, but everything is working fine. So first we'll land in this endpoint. And when we click continue, you can see that we do get our weather forecast back. But now, if I were to keep executing this, you can see that we don't hit that breakpoint again. We actually just get a response back immediately. And that's because it's coming from our output cache. And after 60 seconds, this would expire and we'd hit that breakpoint again to regenerate the response. So that just gives a quick idea of how output caching works by default. Now, remember that this is stored in memory right now. And in some cases, that's not what you're gonna want for your production applications you might want something called a distributed cache where you have sort of a central data store for all of your cached information that your different app instances can read and write to. So for example, if you have three different instances of the same app running, if each of those are storing data in memory, you might run into some consistency issues between them, or if one of those instances crashes, that data is lost because it's stored in memory, and Redis allows us to have a more reliable centralized data store for our caching, and it's highly performant and scalable and includes all kinds of other benefits. So let's see how we would actually implement this. .NET 8 gives us some new features that make this much simpler to do. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do actually is install a NuGet package. And so we can say .NET add package, and that'll be the Microsoft.extensions.caching.stackexchange Redis package. And you'll wanna spe uh, specify a pre-release here, depending on when you watch this. It might be out and you might not need this, but I'm gonna add that for now. And that's gonna add a package into our app. And setting up Redis as the data store is actually super easy to do if you already have your caching set up like we do here. So below our add output cache, we can just add another registration here that says add stack exchange Redis output cache, if I can spell this correctly. And this allows us to specify um, an action where we can set up some options. So I'll create that quick. And there's actually two options we want to configure. The first one is just called configuration. And this is basically gonna be our connection string, so I'll leave that blank. And then the next one is gonna be the instance name. And this will prefix our Redis keys uh, with whatever value we specify here. So I'm just gonna say something like Redis testing. You can make this whatever you want. Now for this connection string, that's where we actually have to go out to a running or a real Redis instance and get the connection information. 
So for now, I'm gonna stop our app and then let's jump over to Azure to get this set up. So inside Azure, you're gonna want an Azure Cache for Redis instance, like I mentioned earlier. And you can search for that um, in here by just searching for Redis. So you can see here's Azure Cache for Redis. Now I already have one created, but they're super easy to create if you don't have one already. So just click the Create button up there and pick your subscription. Um, I would just recommend creating a new resource group. For the instance names, make sure that this DNS name is something uh, globally unique. So you can see this is gonna be like a real domain. And then pick your location. Um, the one you wanna be really careful about is this cache type. So Redis uh, cache pricing varies quite a bit. Um, I would definitely recommend picking the C0 basic one here. Um, at the time of this recording, this seems to cost about two cents per hour to run, but it's only recommended for very basic development and testing scenarios. So this is the one I picked. Some of these do cost a lot of money, so be very careful when creating this. And I recommend always checking out the full pricing details here. Uh, so just be careful when you're creating this. And you can set up these additional options along the top on these other tabs, or you can just accept the defaults and hit uh, create here. Now I already did this, so I'm gonna jump back to the one that I already created here. And the part that we're interested in at the moment is this access keys. This is where we'll actually find the connection strings uh, to connect to this Redis instance. So we get a primary and a secondary connection string. Now I want to strongly caution you when using connection strings. Uh, you never want to put this connection string in an unsecure location or somewhere where uh, another user could find it who doesn't have access. You don't wanna check these into source control or email them around. Be very careful with these secure connection strings. Uh, there are other ways of authenticating in Azure, but we're gonna use this for right now because it's the simplest option. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and then I'll be deleting this as soon as I use it for this demo. So let's jump back over to our app here and we'll plug in the connection string here and I'll save our file. And now let's see what happens when we start our application back up. So back in Swagger, initially this should actually behave just how it did before. So if I were to expand this, then hit execute, uh, we should hit our breakpoint again since this is the first request on this session. So I'll hit continue, and sure enough we get our response data back. But now when I click execute, our data is still being cached and we get these immediate responses, but now those are coming from our Redis store in Azure. And what's interesting is that I could actually stop this application and then I'm gonna launch it again immediately. And this should still actually have our cache data. This should be independent of our app process or our app sessions. So if I just re uh, refresh this Swagger page here, and then if I execute a request, you can see I got the response back and we never hit our breakpoint, even though we just restarted the app from scratch because that data is stored out in Redis. Now, if you want to be extra sure that that data is in your Redis cache, there's a few ways to query Redis to find that out. Some of those get a little bit involved. Um, I found the easiest way to do this is actually to just use the uh, Azure cache extension. So if you install this extension, it gives you a nice little browser where you can actually uh, read through your Redis instance. So over in our Azure panel here, if I uh, expand this and refresh here. Um, you can see right now that's empty. That's probably because it expired. So if I click execute, yeah, sure enough, we hit our breakpoint. So I'll click continue. And now when we come back over here and refresh this, you can see we have a key. So this, this actually includes our Redis testing key. If you remember, we specified um, an instance name here. So there it is, our Redis testing up there. And so that's the prefix for our key. And now as we execute this, we get our response back immediately. Now this, if you keep refreshing this, eventually this value will go away when it expires. The expiration time is actually linked up here. Uh, that's what happened before. So if you wait 60 seconds, this will disappear. And then when you run the request again, you'll hit the breakpoint and the whole thing will cycle all over again. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how easy it is to convert your app to use Redis output caching. Output caching can just cache the entire response for you at once, either in memory or now in Redis with .NET 8. So please hit subscribe to support the channel and hit like to support the video. 
and I'll see you next time right here on The Code Wolf.